All right, guys. Our next guest is set to return for his sixth, yes, sixth fight in just 14 months when he takes on Kelvin Gastelum at UFC 236 for the interim middleweight title. One of the fastest rising stars in the UFC, the last stylebender himself, Israel Adesanya. Welcome back to Submission Radio. Fresh after training. How are you, man? Mm, good. I'm just uh, on my way to go do some more filming and grab some breakfast. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Well, anytime Israel Adesanya is on submission ready, it's always a good time here in the office. And the last time we spoke to you was in Melbourne after you went over Anderson Silva. You said you couldn't wait to shower and just enjoy the moment. So we have to find out what was that shower like and the moment once it all sunk in. It was beautiful. I was uh, silent. I was in the shower sipping some bourbon and just mm. thinking, plotting. Yeah, it was a good time. Nice. I've never heard of anyone sipping bourbon in the shower, so this is uh, this is nice. It sounds good. Um, just looking back on that fight, what would you say was the biggest thing you sort of took away or that you learned about yourself that night, Israel, after you sort of watched the footage back? Um, I belong, you know, where I'm at right now. I definitely, like, everything I said I was going to do and then getting it done, it's supposed to happen this way. So my biggest take is... I'm on the right path. And he told me, you know, stay focused and stay on the right path. So I, I'm where I'm supposed to be. That's what I took away from that fight. Mm. And we also took away the fact that you're a good UFC matchmaker because when asked who you <laughs> want to see Anderson Silva fight next, uh, Israel Adesanya said a cannoneer, which uh, no media member even suggested. And then we all thought, no way that fight would happen. No way the UFC would do it. And then bang, UFC 237, the fight comes together. Another prediction you know, comes true, Israel. How did you feel about I that when you saw that? Fighter, before I wanted to be a fighter, while I was watching The Ultimate Fighter Season 1 in 2005, I was like, fuck that. You would never pay me enough to get in a cage. But Dana White's job looked fun. You know, <laughs> being on the back end now and seeing what he does, no thanks. But I know how to make fights. I, you know, Styles make fights. Hey, I'm Styles, my man. Dude, yeah, you definitely weren't wrong about that one. Fast forward just two days after that fight, and the UFC were already looking to get you back in there against Kelvin. What, what was your reaction when they said it would be the interim belt? Interim belt, And also, I'm wondering, why, why take that fight as opposed to waiting for the Rob to heal up? I feel like you're always going on holiday, then the holiday gets cancelled. I've lost so much money just for from planned holidays, you know. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, uh, for a belt, with the new belt system, I'm pretty sure that means I get two belts when I get the interim and then get the get to unify the belts. So everyone else can rock around with one belt while I'm rocking two and then eventually three. But yeah, uh for me it wasn't really a not an issue. I just knew me and Dana shook on it. I'm fighting for a belt in my next fight. So you know, man of his word, I'm fighting for a belt in my next fight. Mm. Paulo Costa was claiming that the UFC offered him the interim title fight against Calvin after you declined. Can you just clarify that? Was there ever a moment where you considered not taking the fight? See how he tried to scare me? Fucking motherfucker don't realize. You see that? You guys see that? Saw a little bit of it, yep. Was that huge? What happened? That was huge. I had this ready for him. <laughs> Fucking hell. Is, it, is this a regular stop. thing? Is he always pranking you, huge? He's, yeah, he's just, we, we fuck around each other, but he, he knows today's not my day because I've just had cameras follow me the last two days and, yeah. and they're waiting for what they're setting up right now. And I'm, uh, I don't know how the Kardashians do it. That's one thing I'll say. That's like having to. Well, that, they have a billion dollars, Israel, so people are driving them yeah. around. Yeah, no, nah, but it's not even that. Like having to retake because it's not reality TV. Mm. Nothing just happens. I like that. You have to like set things up and then set up. I've seen how everything's set up now. It's not as easy as uh, it looks. But anyway, I just sick of cameras in my face and he can just tell. So he's fucking with me on that. <laughs> but either way, um, what was I saying? Uh, what was the question I had before he scared me? Try to just Costa me. saying that the UFC offered him an interim title fight against Cal yeah, after it's declined. Was there ever a moment you decided, considered not taking the fight? I never declined that fight once. And also, how the fuck is the UFC going to offer him an interim title fight with 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 Kelvin when he was already scheduled to fight Yoel Romero? And Yoel Romero wasn't injured, and that fight was already scheduled, was ready to go. So how the hell would the UFC then offer him an interim title fight? 
I don't know where he's. First of all, is he fighting now? Huh? He's, he's not fighting. Is he fighting now, exactly. And oh, it's for undisclosed reasons. You know, the man is just. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it because it's just it's, it's it's funny. I'm just I don't be I've been laughing about this. You know, oh my god, him really? He 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 popped, or he failed a side of drug test? Like I'd laugh about it, but I'm just not in the mood at the moment. <laughs> sure, I, I I wanted to ask you because I believe you said on the Luke Thomas show, Israel, that you you believe Rob should have been stripped initially i think after the anderson silver fight did you ever throw that out there to the ufc or discuss it when discussing the interim belt did you ever speak to him and say hey why isn't this for the real belt yeah i mean look i felt look this can be for the real belt and then he just when when he comes back he can, he can fight me for it but um you know if you're the champion if you're that confident what's the problem oh you're not gonna have your belt on you on you, on you when you fight i don't know I just, fuck, man, just, I don't care. I'm fighting for a belt at the end of the day, and then I'll get that belt. I don't really care about belts. I just said, uh, look, he's only defending the belt, I think maybe once, because Romero didn't make weight. Um, well, I don't think he's actually defended the belt. No, technically he hasn't. So, and also he's fought once in the last year. I fought fucking six times, in, or five times in, um, a year or so yeah i just I, I don't really care at the end of the day i'm, I'm fighting for a belt i'm looking forward to my fight and does that i mean the big question is does that mean you'll be earning pay-per-view points for the first time given that you're fighting for a title because i i mean it made sense that you would have made points for ufc 234 but it, it didn't really look like you ended up getting them right uh yeah those one well that was like that was on the contract so you know i just had to put it out there just to let them know that I'm watching, that I'm, mm. I'm, aware, I'm aware of these things. A lot, of, a lot of other fighters wouldn't really be aware, but I'm aware of these things. But, um, yeah, moving on up, and I'm fighting for the UFC belt. And, yeah, the points are coming my way. And also, I get, I get this is not even my card at, at, at the end of the day. When I have my own card, main like my first pay-per-view headliner, when I get to, from start to finish, sell the fight, it'll be a different story. I think what's exciting, though, is that assuming all goes well and then you get the interim title and you fight Rob, if if and when you guys fight, because you'll be a champion, you'll then get pay-per-view points. Um, because I think technically that'll be, I don't know what your contract looks like, but I think that is the deal. But I, I was going to ask, you said that you don't really care about belts. And I've heard fighters say that before. I find it sort of a fa fascinating mentality. What is, I guess, the real prize for you when you fight Kelvin? Like, if you go out there, you win, they wrap the belt around your waist. Will that be special for you in, in any moment? Or, or are you kind of already sort of looking forward as this fight is, is your big tick ticket to, I guess, fight Rob and, and, and win that real belt? Or is, is this kind of, I guess, I don't know, on, on your journey of development as far as being the best guys in the division? Um, a lot of people say they don't care about the belt, but that's not true. For me, when I say it, I really mean that. But... I care about it in a way like I care about my jewelry. It looks really nice. Hmm. And also what it signifies, what it signifies as well as being the best in the world. But I'll tell you what, I've known a few fighters in the past who I consider to be the best in the world who've never had a belt. And the belt's not always, um, it's not always a, a good judgment on who the best fighter actually is. Uh... So yeah, um, for for me, it's uh, the belt. Uh, it's um, it's uh, it's like it's more like just the me living what I've 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 dreamed of in my head. Me actually getting it done, and it's like and new. Dana puts the belt around your waist, and that moment will be cool. But I wouldn't feel any different. Rashad Evans said it best. He said after you won the belt at UFC 92 against Forrest Griffin, after you won the belt. He expected to feel different, but he never did. And I already, I already kind of know that about myself. Like it's not going to be any different. <sighs> Fuck. Like yeah, I care about the belt as much as I, like I care about my jewelry. I love my jewelry, but it's not everything. Mm. Do you, Do you care about fighting Rob and that fight coming together? Because I mean, for a lot of people, and you were sort of talking to us about this a while ago. It, it's sort of a huge fight down here, you know, New Zealand versus Australia. It would be a massive deal wherever it happens, whether it be in Sydney or in New Zealand somewhere. Is that? Do you still care about that aspect of it, getting that fight to happen if you beat Kelvin? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't care if it happens in New Zealand or Australia. It's not too far over the ditch. I just want it to be historic and in the most historic place it can be possible. If we can get it done in Auckland, that would be amazing. Or even in Wellington, that would be cool. But, uh, yeah, it's just Australia seems like it'll have the better stadiums or the better facilities to host that kind of a event of that magnitude. Mm. And, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not too fussed on, on the semantics. I just know, like, look, if the fight was in the underground garage on live stream pay-per-view, I'd still, you know, I'd still whoop it, I'd still whoop their ass. But it just happens to be in front of a lot of people and then streaming all across the world as well. And there's a whole pattern tree behind it. So I'm just, yeah, I'm I'm used to it. But I'm mm. trying to see if these guys want to go. Oh, I carry on, sorry. No, that's all good. What do you mean? There's some people in front of you being silly? Uh, no, 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 they're fine. It's just the uh, the camera crew. I thought I, I think they're waiting on me. But okay, I'd rather get okay. this stuff. Yeah. We appreciate your time, man. We'll be we'll be quick. Um, just quickly on that, you mentioned Rob. You know, he spoke in his podcast. He said he has a lot of respect for you, but he also believes you're not as good as you think you are, and that you're in a pedestal. Your pedestal isn't as quite as high as you think, as you might think. I mean, what did you think of those comments, and does it affect any way that you think about Rob leading into this potential fight if you beat Calvin? I don't think of those comments and it doesn't affect me in any way. I mean, when the time comes, when I have the mic, when I have the mic in my hand, I'm saying my thing, I'll say, you know, he, he thinks I'm not as good as I think I am. I'll show him I'm greater than I think I am. So they all they all can talk. They all have something to say till they're in front of me and they, they get chin checked. You know, um, I'm not I'm not like Wonder Boy. Even the way I fight, I'm not like Wonder Boy. I'm not like anyone he's ever fought that's actually given him problems, depending on weight classes. I'm not like Yoda Metal. This is this is different. So I'm still learning, you know. Even though I've had so many fights in just one year, I've learned and I've grown each fight. But it's only been a year in the UFC. Don't worry. And it, everything they're writing checks with their mouth right now, but they actually cash it later on. Well, I think that's the crazy thing about Israel is that even though you fight so frequently, we see a newer and updated version every time you step out. I want to ask, you know, that 236 presser, you and Kelvin had a face-off. I'm, I'm wondering if you if you got a chance to see anything in his eyes or, or gauge anything from him when you guys faced off. And also, you sort of ducked down and, you know, everyone kind of had a laugh. You were sort of showing the, the height difference. Were, were you trying to get in his head or was that just you sort of trying to entertain yourself? I was just entertaining myself. I was entertaining my my people. I, co I I play to my crowd a lot, and my crowd is like literally maybe six, seven people, or my mm. friends, like inside folks. And it just it's cool if people find it funny, and it was funny. Um, but I didn't see anything in his eyes. He's not he's not a man that's scared. He's not a man that's shook. So I, I like that. I like you know, skill for skill. There's no need to try and like play no mind games or shake him or whatever because he knows he looked in my eyes i'm not scared and i know he's not so yeah we're gonna fight skill for skill and the best man will mean the best man will win uh you you have to fly over to do the press conference you've got a hundred commitments that you have to do in terms of video you fought a bunch of times recently H how do you fit time in for yourself your personal time and for time in for training as well do you feel like this lead up is adequate enough for you to go in there and do UFC 236 I mean you're looking a little bit tired but we know you just finished with training but how do you sort of deal with all of that I'm not even, this was a light train I'm not even tired I'm just frustrated I really they're going to be gone today and then I can kind of have my own space back mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm not tired. I don't get tired. IDGT. I'm just a little bit uh, vexed, <laughs> if you will. But, I, um, yeah. I got, you know I got, I got to ask. It's, it's sort of interesting. You know, you've got this camera crew around you. You're sort of saying, hey, you're sick of having cameras in your face. I know the other day you kind of put on Insta stories about the whole Conor McGregor incident where somebody had a camera in his face, some stranger, and then, of course, we all know what happened. 
I, I feel like you were sort of offering a bit of an alternative take, what it's like from a fighter's perspective, what it's like from a celebrity's perspective to be in one of those situations. What, what was your take on that whole situation? I don't know what happened. People were saying, look, it's, it's 5 a.m. and whatever, you know, he was doing this and that. I don't give a fuck if, you know, you see anyone anywhere doing anything you know it doesn't give you the right to just kind of run up on them with a phone and i've had that on personal levels like you know in the past when i'm hanging out with someone and then you know i'm hanging out at a party and i'll just start seeing phones you know when you text there's a little angle with the texting mm -hmm. but then when you see the phone filming it's just like and i'm like why are you guys filming me like i don't like what the fuck and one of them was, oh, we just wanted to pick. I'm like, well, fucking ask. Don't just stop filming me secretly. And that's at a party. I'm just hanging out. And, yeah, I just don't feel people just, like I said, I've put so many PSAs. In, I've put two PSAs now on my on my, my um, Instagram just saying kind of like just chill because I, I still don't get it. I, I And I, 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 I just can't relate where people just scream and lose their shit. And, oh, my God, this and that. Like, and I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. And it's not... A lot of people try and like pander to the fans are like, oh, you know, I've never turned down a fan. I don't give a fuck. If someone's a dick to me, I'm a dick back to them. But if someone's nice to me, like example, a guy, a guy came to the, um who through other means through um being uh, screened. He came to the gym today after being screened by someone from the gym, just because he's a big fan and he wanted to meet me. And you know, during my my rest rounds, I sat down. And I, had, I had you know talk to him he was watching me train and while I was resting we're doing pads are huge you know we had a bit of a corridor and it was just cool to just talk to someone who wasn't you know extra he was just cool like he just treated me like a regular person but Kara said he's a mega fan and he really wanted to meet me and he sent like this long ass message long 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 ass message about how he wants to meet us and yeah, he was just, like, he was cool. He was just cool. That's one thing I appreciate. He just treated me like just a person, not like something else. He just treated me like a human being. And that's really rare these days. And that's why I really appreciate real conversations rather than the generic scripted conversations I get from people constantly. Because sometimes I feel like going, look, I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> and as a possible list of answers for your questions and just give them so they can just read. You know, oh, how's training going? Oh, when are you going to fight? Oh, are you going to win this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking. You guys have no idea. So, I mean, look, I said fuck fame, but I love the perks. And part of it is just part of this life is having to deal with people and deal with energies. But thing is, you got to realize people are weird. You get some awesome people. But you get, like, you know, the 10% the or the or the 20% that's just weird and creepy and douchebaggery and they're the ones that are stand out for whatever reason so with the corner situation i don't know but i don't give a fuck look if you see john jones doing a line or pick a gram somewhere don't fucking run up on him trying to take photos because guess what if he spinning elbows you in the face you deserve it <laughs> i was yeah I, I was gonna say that's that's definitely uh real talk that's that's lessons for life john jones by the way he he actually expressed interest in fighting you. he said that he'd be very excited by that challenge what do you think when a guy who's not even in your weight class, who's a champion of the weight class above, expresses interest in fighting you. It shows you how serious they're taking me, the smart ones, how 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 much they know I'm a threat, how serious they're taking me. So, um, yeah, I've uh, and also showed receipts. Like, he mentioned it, like, on fight week of uh, 225 or 235 or whatever. And then I went back two weeks prior on messages with Eugene when I, I, I put the question out there, is, uh, how are we going to beat John Jones? And... He kind of just laid down the rough blueprint, and I blurred a lot of it out. But um, yeah, we're so focused on Gaston. So you guys Gaston. have been preparing for this man for a while behind the scenes. Not really, no. I just kind of put it out there after my last fight. After I beat Anderson Silva, I was like, "Well, that's done. How do I beat John Jones?" And I just text Eugene. I was like, Ooh, "How do I beat John Jones? Or how do we? How do we beat John Jones?" And then he just, yeah, he's like, "Huh? You worried about that prick?" He's like, "Nah, <laughs> let's focus on Gaston." But Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, yeah, true. Well, we're focused on 100%. Everything's focused on one man right now. You know, that's just like, look, John Jones and Silva talked about fighting each other for, for years as well, but that never came to fruition. This, I feel, is different. So, 
yeah, I look forward to that challenge as well. So you, well, you, 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 would you would you kind of again not not to jump the gun or anything, but would you kind of do it almost for the fans because that Anderson GSP fight never came together? Fuck the fans! I'm not doing it for the fans. I'm doing it for me. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Israel. Whenever we speak to you, talk about the movie that's going to what? be made. So, speaking of the movie that's going to be playing out after this UFC 236 and said and done, how do you see yourself getting it done against Kelvin to win the title battle and set up this huge fight between you and Rob? How does this part of the movie look? If you're looking at it in your head, you're Brett Ratner, you're Steven Spielberg, mm-hmm. you're one of the top producers in the world. How's this part of the movie looking? This is the the start of the next documentary, the lead up to this fight, and then the fight with Rob Whitaker. So, yeah, this is the start of the next movie. And how do I get it done? I'm just gonna get it done. I'm I'm gonna get it done. That's I I, I don't know why people are always expecting predictions. Like I'm I'm supposed to like oh I'm gonna knock him out in the first round. I'm gonna fuck him up in the fifth round. There's many ways I can finish him. I could submit him. Don't get me wrong. I could submit him. I could outlast him. I can outgas the limb him. Ha, pun. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dry right now. See, my lips are dry. How dry my fucking jokes are. I'm, yeah, I'll get it done. Just mark my words. I will get it done. Just remember that. You're going to go out there. You're going to feel the fight out in true Stylebender fashion. We can't wait. Follow the man on Twitter and Instagram, at Stylebender. A lot of PSAs, a lot of excellent stories, a lot of storytelling in general, a lot of insight. Obviously, the man takes on Kelvin Gaslam at UFC 236, April 13th. It will be the 14th in Australia, New Zealand, because of the time difference in Atlanta, Georgia. Israel, man, we know you got a lot of cameras in your face, so we really appreciate you taking the time, sitting down with us, letting us in your life for a little bit, dropping some real talk. Good luck on April 13th. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, cheers, guys. See you.